have a lot more information on Thomas Matthew Crooks, including the neighborhood that he lived in, his high school background, his degree in college, what he did for a living, his personality. Let's go into the profile of the shooter as well as what his job was, mental health history, let's break everything down. First though, I'd like to start by just shouting this GoFundMe out, I will link this down below. Uh, this is a uh, protected uh, GoFundMe, and uh, Meredith uh, is putting this together. She works, I believe, for the Trump campaign. Her LinkedIn indicates that. But anyway, uh, this had a $1 million goal of fundraising money for the victims uh, of the Butler, Pennsylvania shooting, where obviously Donald Trump was shot in the ear. Uh, and uh, out of that $1 million goal, almost $4 million have already been raised. So absolutely incredible. A lot of folks have been donating to this. Vivek, for example, has donated to this. A lot of really big donations uh, to this GoFundMe. Uh, anyway, I'll link this down below. Worth noting, uh, and it's it's just sad, very sad. Uh, Corey used to be a firefighter and the uh, uh, fire department ended up uh, hanging out his uniform right at the front uh, of the station in honor of him as he was protecting and shielding his daughters from the shooting. Uh, absolutely terrible, highly emotional, so sad and so unfair. Uh, in fact, here's Corey's Twitter or X profile, and he responded to uh, Katard or Katard or whatever you want to call him over here, uh, also known as the turd you can't flush. Anyway, uh, what's everyone getting into this weekend? And Corey responded on the day of the shooting, Trump rally, Butler, PA, very excitedly. So very, uh, very sad to see this is his last post. Uh, anyway, oh, so sad. It's so painful, especially as a, as a dad to hear this. Uh, but, but what an honorable person. Firefighter, ex-Marine, didn't deserve to die. Uh, anyway, let's now talk about Thomas. Oh, this guy. Okay, so a few things. Uh, first of all, how the hell did he get on this freaking rooftop? Uh, we've talked about this at length and ad nauseum, but now you've got a lot of finger pointing going on. Very common in situations like this. I'll give you the DL on this. The Secret Service was aware of the building where the shooter shot from. In fact, police in the Secret Service previously identified Thomas Matthews Cro Matthew Crooks as a threat in the days before the event. Why? Because he was walking around the event super sketch and sus. They put out a radio call before the event even began, sussing this guy out and putting him on alert. And apparently nobody decided to keep their eyes on him as he climbed up on a roof with a, within 120, 130 yards of the president to take a shot at him. Terrible. Anyway, the Secret Service was aware of the building where the shooter shot from. Uh, it's owned by a glass research company, and there's a lot of speculation about why there was a ladder at the side of that building. Uh, it, who knows? I mean, maybe Thomas planted it the day before, or maybe the glass company just left the ladder there. It's not uncommon for commercial buildings to have a ladder uh, there. But what, what is uncommon is that the Secret Service and law enforcement didn't cover the building. The Secret Service is pointing the finger at local law enforcement, saying it was their job to protect the outside perimeter. A common practice, they're saying. The district attorney is responding and saying, look, we had four sniper teams, four quick response teams deployed. The Secret Service was in charge of security outside of the venue, not local uh, law enforcement. So basically you have the classic kind of back and forth finger pointing that leads to guess what? Nothing getting done. Now there was also talk that in Pennsylvania, some secret service assets were actually moved uh, now this is just an allegation. The secret service has denied this, but there's some allegations uh, that the Secret Service moved assets from the Trump rally to Jill Biden's rally, that there was some kind of diversion. This is because of a uh, post by uh, Newsweek. Secret Service denies diverting resources to Jill Biden. Uh, and basically the allegation was, oh, Jill was in town, so they had to split resources up, didn't have enough manpower, so to speak. And I say that in quotes since obviously there are women included here as well, which, you know, we, we had a discussion about DEI and all that stuff in our last video on this topic. Secret Service is denying this. 
Oh, let's be clear. Uh, there were not enough Secret Service staff to handle the situation. So whether there wasn't a diversion or whether Trump got the B team, so to speak, because he's not the current president uh, or, you know, there are some allegations that he got people from Homeland Security and other departments not associated with the Secret Service because there was such a staffing sh shortage. Secret Service is like, no, 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 none of this is true. Whatever. There's going to be a lot of investigating that goes on into this. And I just want you to know, the finger pointing does no good at this point. The point is, the Secret Service failed. In fact, we even recognize that at one point, uh, it looks like an officer climbed up the ladder, the very ladder that Thomas Crooks used to get up, at the same time as folks were yelling that there's a man with a gun. Uh, an officer actually climbed up uh, the same ladder. And apparently Thomas Cooks turned around, pointed his rifle at the officer. The officer either went back down or stumbled, stumbled down the ladder. Then Thomas turned around, rotated his rifle at Trump and started shooting. That might explain, might explain why the Secret Service snipers didn't shoot earlier. Because maybe they didn't see the rifle pointed down, didn't see it until he rotated around to point over. Some people say they didn't have a, there he is, uh, alive in the shot right here, climbing up. He's sort of crawling up right there. You could see him. It's crazy. People were seeing him crawl into position. Uh, the law enforcement response here was, was absolutely pathetic. We don't need to listen to all the, the swearing and people yelling here. This man with a gun, man with a gun. I, I think you've got the idea here. Uh, absolutely disgusting, though. So a lot of folks, by the way, also now suggesting that there was enough wind to tangle the American flag, which looks either like an eagle or an American uh, or, or an angel, quite frankly. Uh, but that wind may have been enough to actually change the trajectory of that bullet. That really a, just a five mile an hour wind pushing on that bullet could have diverted it that inch that was really needed or quite frankly, probably less than an inch. But anyway, let's talk more about the crook. Thomas Matthew Crooks. So what do we know about him? 20 years old interested in chess and coding, is considered a nerd, has an associate's degree in engineering, deemed to have had few friends and considered quiet. He was considered somebody that was actually regularly bullied. He worked at a nursing home and helped with meal prep. The specific nursing home is the Bethel Park Skilled Nursing and Rehabilitation Center. That center did not give any reason for concern, and they suggested that Thomas performed his job well, and they had a clean background. He didn't have a lot of posts on social media. There were no notes, letters, or manifestos found. The FBI has still not been able to access his cell phone, which is leading some to suggest that there's a conspiracy, that maybe they have the wrong person. They suggest that this was a setup. Some people are trying to really analyze like his ear. They're like, oh, well, in one picture he has gauges and one picture he didn't have gauges. And, and there's a lot of speculation using basically his kill shot photo, which, you know, is obviously going to be a little bit of a messed up photo uh, because, well, like a bullet basically went into his eye and out of his neck. It does a little bit of damage to your head. The pressure that expands on your skull and, and you know, every part, it, it's gross. You don't need to see this stuff. I don't encourage people looking at it. Uh, but anyway, and I'm not going to show it. But the point is, there's a lot of speculation. Was it the right person? I, I, I don't really want to go down that hole. I think the right person is dead. I think I, he probably has an iPhone. iPhones are really good at not having a backdoor for the FBI to get into. Though I wouldn't be surprised if eventually they get into it. It'll just take them a little bit longer. Uh, anyway, it sounds like he used an AR-15 with 5.56 ammo. Uh, the gun was purchased by his father, but he was able legally, uh, and he was able to purchase the ammo just before uh, the event. He was part of a gun club. Uh, there are some rumors that he was a really bad shot kind of aligns with what happened here. I don't know if those rumors are accurate. He was a registered Republican, but he donated $15 to a progressive cause uh, through Act Blue. Now, I thought that was really interesting. Act Blue, worth noting, is a platform for fundraising for Democrats. Now, I mentioned that because, uh, you know, when I ran for governor, I knew Act Blue very, very well. They only allow you to fundraise through Act uh, Blue because they want all of the data, basically. And only Democrats are allowed to use Act Blue. 
Anyway, uh, his parents were social workers and counselors. Uh, they were registered uh, as licensed in Pennsylvania, registered as uh, one a Democrat, one a Libertarian. So you kind of have a big household here. One's a Republican, the kid, uh, Democrat, a uh, father, a mother, and then Libertarian father, a mother. Father worked locally in Bethel, middle class neighborhood. Uh, you know, this this isn't to, to like, it's not like we're trying to dox the guy. Uh, it's pretty obvious already where he lives. I mean, this this information is all over the internet. So this is, it's not like I'm revealing anything special here. But uh, his Act Blue donation receipt for $15 right here, January 20th, 2021. This would be inauguration time. Uh, yeah, I think that it might actually have been inauguration day. But anyway, donated uh, $15 here. And here's his name. His address is on Milford Drive. This is not the correct address. I'm kind of doing that on purpose. Uh, he's on this particular street here. I I'm not trying to give the exact address here. But you've got uh, Bethel Park Volunteer Fire Co. Uh, roughly across the street. But this is the neighborhood. So this is a very low to middle class neighborhood. I think middle class is generous to say this is these homes are worth not that much. Uh, I mean, let's let's go to uh, let's zoom out here to the solds. You're yeah, you're you're definitely below the national median. You know, a three and two thousand square feet here sells for about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. One seventy one for a three and three over here. Uh, I'll, I'll look at active listings for a moment uh, in this neighborhood. Methil, uh, uh, Medford Drive is where you lived. Uh, here's a lot for thirty thousand, which shows you the dirt isn't too valuable. And homes now selling with twenty five thousand dollar price cuts. Uh, for two ninety nine for a four bedroom, uh, here's a two sixty nine four bedroom. So you're not really getting a lot of movement over here. Even the two bedroom at two hundred k is getting price cuts. So you got a softening market over here. Uh, even though prices were relatively low here, the poverty rate was also deemed to be pretty low, only about three point seven percent. So very low poverty rate in the area, uh, but certainly by no means a a you know luxury living. This is very kind of normal American, slightly below average. Uh, one student who graduated one year after Crooks and went to school with him said uh, if someone would say something to his face, he would just kind of stare at them. So it sounded to me like he had kind of like the more weird kind of nerdy personality. Uh, it, not uncommon. I feel like you could kind of see it uh, just in, in the pictures here of him. Uh, th these are – this is the address of the fire department, by the way. Uh, but anyway, these are um, – some photos of him. He was also apparently featured at one point in a BlackRock ad. Now, I thought that was really interesting, and it, it'll show you uh, a little bit of him. Uh, I'll pull that up here in a moment. But what's what's fascinating is I kind of think of him as, like, the programmer type who's super quiet, smart, and nobody really felt like they, I mean, there were a few rumors that, you know, maybe they thought he'd be the one to shoot up a school because he was weird, didn't have a lot of friends, and he was bullied. But he didn't have a history of mental health problems. And he didn't have a history of crime, didn't have a history of violence. It seems like just out of nowhere, he kind of snapped. And that's the scariest type because how do you screen for that? You know, you kind of have to catch him at the moment. Uh, when they snap. The problem with that is you had a crappy law enforcement response to this snap. And he's on the roof. Let's listen in here. I teach AP and honors economics in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Financial well being honors economics right in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Financial well being to me is knowing that I can be free to do the things that I love to do. Anyway, this is like a big Black Rock ad or whatever, and he's featured in it. You know, some there he is again. Uh, some people are speculating that uh, you know there are hints in this ad, and this is all put together. But I think a lot of that is is Fugazi. I'm not trying to like cast aside, but I really haven't paid much attention to that. I'm trying to I try to stick to the facts. People considered him intelligent. He intelligent. He was one of the uh, 20 students to win a $500 prize for a math and science competition. He was part of the Claritin Sportsmen's Club. That's the uh, firearms training club. Uh, he, uh, there were also explosives and bomb making material found in his car. Not great. You don't want to see that. Bullied a lot. Uh, again, uh, you know, miserable response here from law enforcement coordination with the Secret Service. And Trump has responded. Trump said in an interview with, the, in, in an interview with the Post, uh, that, uh, Trump feels like he's supposed to be dead. And this was a very surreal experience. Uh, and that the doctor at the hospital called this a miracle for Trump. And that agents came in flying like they were linebackers and knocked his shoes off. 
He said that agents hit me so hard that my shoes fell off and my shoes were on tight. Anyway, so this gives you a little bit of color on Thomas Matthews. The problem is how do you screen for this, right? Take a legally purchased firearm. He did buy ammo at some point prior. So, you know, can, can do you do screening at the time of buying ammo? Probably not. Especially since in a lot of states you could just buy ammo online. That's very difficult. It, to me, it, it, it comes solely down to a failure of, uh, frankly, uh, law enforcement and the Secret Service. Because, you know, we're taught if you see something, say something. Okay, well, nobody had, had an indication that he was going to be mental beforehand. Or, or if anything, you know, it was, there were just rumors. No history of violence, mental illness, problems at his workplace, problems at his home life. People liked his parents. His parents were nice. They had a good reputation in the community. It's probably all soiled now. Uh, so, so you've, you've got a sort of a, a very, I would say lack of indicators up front, uh, and very clear indicators on the day of he was sussed out. They put out a radio call that this person was suspicious walking by the, uh, magnetometers, you know, the metal detectors, basically, uh, you had people shouting at the event. There's a man with a gun. I don't I still don't understand why didn't they just pull Trump off when they heard Gun, gun, gun. Like, that's all it would take, in my opinion. Somebody hears, gun, 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 man with gun. Get on the radio. Get Trump off stage, man with gun. Let's investigate. W whatever, right? Get Trump off stage. Take a three-minute breather. It's not that freaking hard. You could always put him right back up, okay? <sighs> Just such a failure. Such a failure. Uh, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, I was talking with Lauren about this yesterday. I think... Uh, and my family, actually, I, we, we think there would have been just outright civil war if, uh, you know, things things went uh, in a different direction. It would have been very, 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 very bad for the country. You know, I know there's some people who are like, oh, I don't like Trump. You know, I know there, there are a lot of people who are like, oh, I kind of wish you'd I think that's terrible. I, I don't condone political violence. I understand a lot of people don't like him. They don't agree with his opinions. I, p violence is not the option. But I think there would have been a lot of violence. A lot of violence. Uh, had something gone wrong. So. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you like my perspectives and insights, feel free to leave a comment down below. Like, subscribe, share the video. Thank you so much. Goodbye and good luck. These things that you told us here, I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take. Even though I'm a licensed financial advisor, licensed real estate broker, and becoming a stockbroker, this video is not personalized advice for you. It is not tax, legal, or otherwise personalized advice tailored to you. This video provides generalized perspective, information, and commentary. Any third-party content I show shall not be deemed endorsed by me. This video is not and shall never be deemed reasonably sufficient information for the purposes of evaluating a security or investment decision. Any links or promoted products are either paid affiliations or products or services we may benefit from. I also personally operate an actively managed ETF. I may personally hold or otherwise hold long or short positions in various securities, potentially including those mentioned in this video. However, I have no relationship to any issuer other than HouseHack, nor am I presently acting as a market maker. Make sure if you're considering investing in HouseHack to always read the PPM at HouseHack.com.